You gave me an, a, a good tour of the, the base and, and uh, the, the sense of looking at the infrastructure. One of the things that people generally don't understand is the role of infrastructure in affecting the operational capability of the Coast Guard. Uh, what, give, give me a sense of, of how the kind of infrastructure you have here to support um, both the Air Station and uh, the Coast Guard Aviation over, overall and how important the infrastructure is to that. Sure thing. Um, essentially, this is a, a World War II vintage base. It's got uh, a deep legacy here within the community in Elizabeth City, and it's played a key role over the years since World War II. And really, any rescue that you see at sea or anything that the Coast Guard's doing out there on the high seas or um, picking up people locally in lakes, inland waterways, all that portion of the operations, uh, you can reverse engineer that and go back to a base like Elizabeth City and see where the folks that do the mission, where they're trained, where they eat, where they sleep, and the equipment that they use and the training facility. So it's all a, you can connect all the dots and go back to where a person is trained and where the equipment's maintained and there's a key linkage there. And if that, that um, foundation of support's not there, it's hard to get those Coast Guard men and women out there doing the mission with the right tools, the right training, at the right time. Uh, it's something that the public at large doesn't see, but it's very, very important to our Coast Guard men and women. One of the things that's striking to me is that uh, we rely on the Coast Guard to actually surge to do for, for national crises like in the Gulf. And uh, we now have on this base uh, the complete support for the entire Air Force for the Coast Guard. Uh, and yet uh, it's warehoused in uh, very old facilities that certainly do not uh, get anywhere near the state of the art. How important is that? How important would it be to get a, a more modern infrastructure to, to, to support the, the Coast Guard Air Force? Oh, Doctor, absolutely essential. Um, as you stated, we have kind of a FedEx approach to aircraft maintenance. Elizabeth City maintains all the aircraft in the whole United States Coast Guard. This is the hub where it all happens, all spare parts, all major maintenance comes through here, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And currently our warehouse, which has a lot of these spare parts, is uh, in need of, of great repair. We have a, a crumbling floor right now, which we're buttressing up. Uh, this part of the country, um, we're close to the Dismal Swamp. We have a lot of underground uh, water. Actually, the warehouse is on top of it, kind of an underground river. So the floor is sagging, so we're looking forward to uh, getting a new warehouse uh, so we can adequately house all the spare parts and get a state-of-the-art warehousing. Because if, if we have a failure here within Elizabeth City for the aircraft maintenance, it will affect the whole fleet throughout the Coast Guard. So that's a huge, a huge uh, infrastructure issue that we're looking forward to uh, working through. But right now we have kind of a uh, bridging strategy with a temporary fix on the, on the floor, if you will. Well, one way to look at the, at, at the situation is that if we've had a, a, a public debate for a long time about the aging fleet, the aging uh, uh, aircraft, the aging, various aging assets, and uh, the challenge for, to retain Coast Guard personnel in difficult financial times. Well, there's absolutely no public visit, visibility, I see very little in Congress, where uh, to look at the base of the pyramid, which is uh, the infrastructure necessary to support a new fleet or new cutters, or uh, it, 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 give me a sense of, of the nature of this kind of pyramid uh, that's crucial to the actual cap capability of the Coast Guard. Oh, sure thing. Um, currently here on this base, which I mentioned is the hub of aircraft maintenance for the whole Coast Guard. Uh, one of the issues as the, the base commanding officer that, that I deal with is just the actual roadways here on the base. Uh, basically, again, we're dealing with World War II uh, roads. We have a quite, lot of quite literally. Yes, literally. We have uh, a lot of traffic. We have uh, what, almost 3,000 people coming in and out of the base every day between the folks that work here and folks that come in for their ID cards or for their medical um, pharmacy or w what have you. We have a small comp, uh, exchange here. And so we just have a tremendous use of our, our roadways. And then as we, we, we're having some projects, which we're happy about, the, the pool rescue swimmer training facilities being put in. But as we have our trucks and deliveries come in, there's a lot of wear and tear on the, on the, on the roadways. Um, in our construction projects, we typically, on the shore side, we focus on buildings or uh, an air station hangar or what. And typically, we never get down to the level where literally you're on the ground. 
but it's a key issue. We have one main road here. It goes along the Pasquotank River, and it's it's key that we maintain that. So currently, my my folks in facilities uh, kind of you know patch up the potholes as they can and, and keep things going. But uh, that's one of those, um, I tell my staff, we're kind of like electricity. Until you don't have it, you don't care about it. The roadways, they just don't, um, it's, it's not something that gets a lot of visibility. And similarly, uh, starting from the ground and then working up, we have a lot of other buildings that we can't house all of our uh, outdoor equipment, our trucks and our some of our yellow equipment. It's all out in the weather right now. We would like more garages for, for those. So all those things that are behind the scenes that are very important to any municipality to, to run a, a town or a base well, which is really what, what this base is. It's a, it's a small, um, I call myself the mayor, but we're really about keeping the utilities here, the electricity, the water, the roadways, and all those things um, are kind of um, behind the scenes. They're behind all the rescues that you see at sea and all the, all the Coast Guard men and women doing the operational mission. We need those that infrastructure and that that uh, that bottom of the pyramid, as you put it, especially uh, when it comes to our people programs. One of the things that we, in our tour, we just looked at was our old gym. The gym used to be a chapel and then it was a uh, movie theater in World War II. And uh, now we have uh, aer aerobic equipment in there and um, have free weights and whatnot. And it's it's adequate and it works, but it's not it's not the optimal solution. Now, part of a, we'll get a state-of-the-art gym and the rescue swimmer training facility, but still, we still have needs at on the whole level for this space for you know state-of-the-art physical Most fitness and equipment for all the folks that that come through the base. And the point is, you have 2,100 personnel, and they're not all going to be uh, rescue swimmers. Uh, correct. Correct. Uh, the final point is that uh, when you mentioned uh, or you showed me uh, all the outdoor uh, uh, st storage of things that are exposed out outdoors and the World War II structures, uh, one of the things that folks should realize is that this is hurricane country. And uh, given that we've decided to consolidate all our uh, aircraft support structure here, one would have to be concerned, it seems to me, that uh, that we uh, the, the, about security from just the, the high winds and and uh, the hurricanes in the area, and so uh, it would be probably optimal if we had uh, some new new capacity here that uh, was more state of the art and, and also more hurricane protected. Yes, that that's spot on. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, sheds, as you mentioned, and equipment outside that should be properly secured and housed in in substantial buildings. Uh, one of my um, initiatives when I got here was try to you know get rid of some of our sheds and what I call the uh, hazardous materials or the the fod, if you will, that could get underway if we have a big blow here. Uh, we're working towards that, but it's it's still been kind of slow going because we've grown a lot faster than we've been able to get the infrastructure there. So what we do is when we do have a threat of a hurricane, we we do take some stuff inside, secure things as best we can. Uh, but it is a concern because this is North Carolina and we have been known to get some pretty big hurricanes through here. Ironically, as we discussed though, sometimes the aftermath of a hurricane, albeit bad that we lose equipment and may have building damage, we do typically get some supplemental funding which will help in, in the rebuild. We were able to reconstitute our waterfront on the Pasquotank River through the last major hurricane that we have and we purchased new riprap and we also re-roofed some of our buildings. So that's kind of the uh, the plus and minus of the hurricane season, but it's certainly not the way to to hope to hope for hurricanes or whatever to to uh, to get money to help recapitalize your your base.